Bill Johnson, the former chairman and CEO of Heinz, currently an operating partner at PE firm Advent International. And Bill Simon also joins us, former Walmart U.S. president and CEO, currently a senior advisor to KKR. Bill and Bill, nice to see you both. Bill Johnson, I'll start you, with you. Okay. Good to see you. Because I, I talked about the impact on consumer companies, which are already feeling it as a result of the Canadian tariffs on imported U.S. soups and ketchups, your former business, and other key food products. How bad is this going to get for some of these companies? Well, if it continues and it, it spreads across Europe and Asia, it can get pretty bad. Again, it affects three parts of the business. It affects cost, it affects price, and most importantly, in some cases, it affects sourcing. Now, CPG gets a little bit of a break because of localized sourcing, but in terms of raw material sourcing, like tin plate, aluminum, things that Campbell mentioned, that becomes a big headwind, and it affects the prices of products made in one country more than necessarily another. So it becomes a big issue, I think, over time if it continues. I just don't believe long term that it's in anybody's best interest to let it go on. Speaking of U.S. business feeling the heat as a result of the tariffs, the president continues to tweet about Harley Davidson just seconds ago. Here's a new one for you, Bill, John, uh, Bill Simon. I'll ask you about it. He writes, now that Harley Davidson is moving part of its operation out of the U.S., my administration is working with other motorcycle companies who want to move into the U.S. Harley customers are not happy with their move. Sales are down 7 percent in 2017. The U.S., President Trump says, is where the action is. Bill Simon, what do you do if you're running a company like Harley Davidson right now? That's a great question. Uh, you know, this president has had taken, you know, drastic and dramatic action, but I think everything that he does is drastic and dramatic. But it is a fact, and, and it's really undeniable that we have a trade imbalance and a significant one that's been building uh, because of the trade policies over the last 20 or 30 years. And uh, dramatic and drastic action tariffs and, and a trade war that we appear to be headed towards, uh, you know, are the president's trying to take to address them. And I agree with Bill Johnson. I, I, I hope it doesn't last long, and I hope it's a way to get people to realize that he's serious uh, and, and come back to the table and renegotiate some of these deals. Yeah, I mean, Bill Simon, that comment has been, we've heard it from many people like you, a lot of CEOs. Michael Dell was with us yesterday saying something similar. Um, unclear whether it's going to happen. What would be the impact on a Walmart customer? I mean, you know those shelves better than anybody. And certainly having uh, done a couple of documentaries on the company, I know a lot of those products are from China, for example. What would be the impact on your typical Walmart consumer if these things, if this keeps running down a road where we do end up in a significant trade war? Well, you know, just to, just to be clear, I mean, two-thirds of the things that Walmart sells are either grown or made in the U.S., and, and then a third are imported. But a third is pretty significant when you're a, you know, $300 billion-plus U.S. business. So it would have an impact in the short run on, on Walmart consumers, and it would be fairly substantial. However, the, you know, the decimation of the middle class led by, you know, U.S. manufacturing loss over the years has also had a big impact, and Walmart's been trying to address that with the commitment to buy U.S. manufactured products, in fact, $250 billion over 10 years. And it's a program that's been really well received and, and progressing towards its goal. So in the short run, pretty, pretty dramatic cost impact. In the long run, probably better for middle class families. Bill Johnson, you know, we look at these uh, trade barriers, the, the restrictions, and the idea is somehow if it, if it causes other countries to reduce their tariffs or increase access to their markets, that would be a great thing. But if ultimately what we're talking about is hoping that large companies, either U.S.-based companies or elsewhere, move production to the United States, it seems like that's the decision that a CEO would only undertake if they had multiple years of certainty about how these things were going to be arranged. So I guess right now, uh, what are the risks and rewards of, of responding at all to, to some of these, uh, these potential barriers? I, I think that's a very good point and, a, and an excellent question. You know, I think sourcing decisions in terms of final production do take a long period of time, and there's a lot more factors that go into it. You have labor costs, you have the strength of the dollar versus the strength or weakness of a local currency. So there are a lot of other issues. And so I think what happens now is most companies will ride this out as long as they can. If this looks like it's going to be sustained, then it will affect sourcing decisions. I must say that one of the things I would have done slightly differently than, than I think some of the things being done now, if I was going to move sourcing, I don't think I'd have broadcast it. I think I'd have done it very <laughs> quietly, recognizing that eventually it does leak out. But I'd have done it quietly so as not to stick a finger 
in anyone's eye. And I think, you know, I think that's to the benefit of shareholders and to employees over time. But, but these decisions are not made overnight, and there are long implications for these decisions because once you move sourcing, you're pretty well committed to that country or that location for a period of time. And so if it reverses itself, you have a cost problem and ultimately a pricing problem. So you need to do these very carefully. So again, I think people let this ride out for a while and see how it plays itself out. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.